Welcome to Seth Craft. I'm currently building a 20 by 30 shop and it's time to get the fascia, the soffit, and the gable end sheathing up. So let's go ahead and get started. The fascia is gonna go on the far side of this two by four to basically protect that two by four from the weather. And it's gonna be up under the metal roof. Now next to the building is where the soffit is gonna be. And that's gonna have slits cut into it which will allow air to pass from the lower side of the roof up to the top side of the roof. And then lastly, let me show you the gable end that needs to be sheathed. And we'll have to do that first before I put anything else up here. So the gable end right now is exposed or open. And so I need to get my OSB sheathing and Tyvek up there before I put in anything else. The fascia that I'm using is a one by six Miratech board, as you can see right here. And for the soffit, I'm using this uh, smart side and it has the slits cut into it. And I will have to rip down this to fit the needs of our building. And then the OSB here is what I'm gonna use on the gable end. And so I will have to cut triangles out of this to fit in our space. So this is where we're gonna start today. I covered up my double top plate with Tyvek and I'm gonna be able to use that double top plate there to connect the sheathing from here down onto that. It'll uh, basically attach this nice and firm to my building itself. So that being said, I need to measure my height right here. Got 42 and a half inches on the peak. And now if I run this out to the eight foot mark, which is the length of my OSB, to about right here, I can tell that I'm gonna go all the way down to that corner right there. And so I need to figure out what that height is there. And I'll be able to uh, cut the triangle off the top and match this up. This side is right at 10 and a half inches for the smaller side. Now it's time to cut out the triangle. On this side over here, I'm gonna move up 42 and a quarter inch. That way it'll give me a little extra space uh, for my gap in there, instead of going the full 42 and a half. And then now on this side down here, instead of doing 10 and a half inches, I'm going to do 10 and a quarter inch. And that should give us enough space. So 10 and a quarter. And now I can use a 10 foot two by four to span that distance and make my mark for the cut. These screws will also help to provide the correct spacing between the lower piece of sheathing and the top piece. Much better having those screws there. Okay, so the other three pieces will be the same. I have to put a little tiny triangle at the end to keep that covered, and then we'll be done with the gable end sheathing. Of course, I gotta put the Tyvek on here as well. I just completed the sheathing and the Tyvek here on the gable ends, and it's looking pretty good. Now, I know you're not here to watch that, so I just kind of zipped through it real quick, and now we can move on to what you're here for, which is the soffit and fascia. So, we're gonna begin with the fascia next. And that's the board that's gonna go on the very outside here of this two by four and stick down. I'm also gonna be placing that same material up here on these eaves as well. So let's go ahead and start working with that. Because I'm working alone to put this fascia up, I have created a little jig here to hold one side while I put the other side in. And this is simply just going to uh, screw into the trusses and that will hold the board up here long enough for me to get one side put on and then I can move down to this side and get that one on. So, all right, let's go up here real quick and get this attached. This jig does not have to be in here super tight because I'll be removing it here in just a moment. All right, I've got my piece of Miratech here. I'm gonna get it started in my little jig and then walk up the ladder to uh, 
get this going up here. So all the jig has to do is just hold that board in place while I walk up the ladder. I'm using these two inch torque screws to get this attached. Should do just fine here. And I've got about a half inch between the top of the OSB and this board. And that will allow the metal roofing to go on here without having a lip up, if that makes sense. So be sure to include that. Now, and what you can do is take a flat edge like this and lay it up here. And you can see that I have about a quarter inch between the trim board and where the metal roof is going to fold over there. So I've got plenty of extra room. All right, I'm gonna step over to this next truss right here and get my uh, little jig back up here to support the next piece. I have the fascia here on this entire side. As you can see, it goes all the way down to the other end. And I was shy on the other end, about a half inch from being out to the edge, which is gonna be great. Uh, nice not to have to cut this any more than I have to. All right, so about every foot or foot and a half, I've put a two inch screw and that's gonna hold that in there just fine. Now, although not necessary, I have some metal roof drip edge, which will go down here. And so I will probably be cutting about where this line is right here, put that drip edge under there, and then this will just barely cover over it. And I should be good to go on the waterproof or water tightness underneath the metal. So filming on top of the ladder and having to move this 12 foot ladder back and forth is not my favorite thing. And so I'm going to go to the other side and do that without you. And I'll bring you back whenever we get to the gable end trim, which will be on the front and back over here. So let me get to work over there and I'll be back in just a moment. I managed to get all of the fascia on the sides of the building. Now it's time to work on the gable ends. So I'm gonna get my jig installed again up here to help hold on to that as I lift it up here. Now I've already pre-measured measured this and it was right at 12 foot. Now I took my speed square to the top of the building and dropped down the angle to see what I need. And it was here on the eight mark here on the top. So I've gone ahead and transferred that here. And I'm gonna cut that end off so that it will meet up at the top. Now I wanna find 12 foot, which is right here. And I'm gonna cut this directly across. All right, I've got this piece up here on top of the ladder. I'm gonna use my jig to hold that end and then I'll be able to put some screws into this side to hold it up. Definitely awkward working alone, but I think we're gonna make it. Okay, like I was saying, this ladder work is not fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the other three sides on and be done with that. And we will move on to the uh, soffit. And uh, that'll be the last step that I have to do on the ladder for a little while. Well, I am very excited to have the gable end sheathing on with the Tyvek and then the fascia on all of the building. So now it's time to move on to the soffit. Like I said before, I'm using a smart soffit, which is basically just OSB with slits in it. And I have to uh, rip this down to the length that I need and also the width as well. So I'm gonna start with the gable side for uh, the front and back. And that's because my building is slightly longer than 32 feet. And so if I were to do the uh, sides first, I would come up short by a couple inches. So let's go ahead and step up the ladder and measure this side here to see what we need to rip this uh, soffit material down to. I need two measurements here. The first one is to see what I need to rip this down to. Now I can put trim around both the top in here and on the building. And so if I cut this a little bit too small, it's gonna be just fine. All right, so measuring here, the space is exactly one foot. So I'm gonna do 11 and three quarter inch on the width here. And now I need to figure out how to get my dimensions from the peak up there down here to the end. Found the length to be 141 inches. 
So I'm going to measure that out real quick and get my mark down here. Okay. And then I also found that I need a 11 and three quarter inch on this side here with the vents. Now the side here with vents needs to be 11 and three quarter inch, which I measured here and found this spot right there. And then if I take my speed square and turn it on the opposite side, the short side, I found that corresponds with four and a quarter inch over here. So I can take this speed square, place my pencil in that uh, mark, and then I can run this along here and that will get my line that I need to cut in order to rip this down all the way. And I'll have my 11 and three quarter inch. Once again, because I'm working alone, I've got a jig to install to help hold these boards in place. So I'm just going to get this up here a little bit and it's basically going to let me uh, slide that soffit in here and hold it while I am getting this uh, installed on the other end. So, I mean, all it is is two scrap boards put together. All right, let's see how well this does. My first piece to install here on this building. I think I'm going to keep the factory edge towards the front so that I can put a piece of trim along the building to hide the edge that I cut. See how well that does. Probably should have gotten this uh, started with the drill first. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Something else I'm forgetting to do is take a pencil and mark the building where the uh, these little blocks are for the ladders so I can get this installed all the way across. So I do know they're two feet apart, so be easy enough to uh, measure them out here. All right, before I get too many screws in there, I'm going to go over here and make sure I'm good on this side. Nope, I am off by about a half inch, so I got to regroup and find a better way to do this. All right, taking a moment to regroup. I have put a second jig up there, so I've got the two of them. And now I can move down to this side and actually push this up so that I can get the side that matters in first here. And uh, that way I don't have to guess while I'm up there. Time to get the second piece installed over here. I've got my second jig ready. So I'm going to get this into position, put that jig in there and then move down there so I can slide it around and find where it needs to be. I've also pre-marked where the studs are up here on the roof as well. So let's see if this is going to work a little bit smoother. Man, my ladder is that far away. Just enough. Getting the vented soffit up in here actually wasn't too bad. I'm gonna have to have a little piece of trim up here in the very top to keep that from being exposed. But I believe once the siding is on here, the other gap next to the building will be gone. So very cool. And as you can see, it's got a pretty close gap right in here and that will be good as well. Now it's time to go for the side of the building, the long side here. So I'm going to use my same blocks. I'm gonna use two of them this time. One towards the end, one here in the middle, and then I will climb the ladder and be able to match up right here. And hopefully it'll line up nice and smooth. So you can see that the trusses have that same angle as this right here. And so it should all line up right there on the edge. So let's go ahead and get these blocks installed. While I'm up here, I might as well go ahead and mark out where my rafter tails are here or my trusses, and that'll let me easily get in here and uh, put my screws in. I figured I might try to do this with the eight foot ladder. We'll see how well this goes here. Okay, pull this other ladder over here and see if I can get this into the second jig. I may have an issue getting this turned up against the uh, trusses here. 
Let's see how it's gonna work. Now nah, I think I'll be able to do it. I'm gonna go ahead and get a screw in here started. Just finished getting that piece installed. There was some variation on this corner right here. And so I will have to add a trim piece, which will be probably a one by two a Miratech board that starts in this corner and goes all the way down. I've got some of that. And that will cover up that gap there on that side. So definitely uh, takes a little bit of effort to get this installed by yourself, but it's not impossible. All right, I'm going to continue down the line and get the rest of this installed. And I will bring you back once I have finished putting the soffit on the rest of this. And we'll take a look at the finished results. It's taken me a week and more trips up and down that 12 foot ladder than I can count. But I have now got the gable end sheathing done with Tyvek. I managed to get the fascia on all around the sides and I have now completed the soffit. So let's go ahead and take a look at all the work that's been accomplished here and then we will close this one out. Believe it or not, I think these three tasks are the most tedious of the entire build so far. Having to climb up the ladder, do one or two screws, climb down, move the ladder, go back up, and it just takes a long time. So I was able to patch together the Tyvek up here and I think it's gonna do just fine to keep the moisture from ever getting to that sheathing. And then as you can see, I've got the fascia up there on the top, and that is also looking very good. I have that going along here. Now, I probably should have left the uh, underlayment up top to fall down over this fascia, but you know what? I can cut that and put the drip edge up under it. So this right here was very difficult to get to because 12 foot ladder hits about right here where this T is. And so uh, quite a task to get up there to the rest of that soffit. As the vented soffit goes, I used the full 16 foot pieces on this far side over here. And then I decided, you know what? It's too much work to get that up by myself. So I cut it into eight foot sections and that worked out a lot better. Same deal over here on this side. It was far too much work to do this without cutting it. And so you can see that is also installed. One fun thing, I stuck my hand up to that vented soffit and I could feel the suction of the air going in there. So it is gonna be highly effective, especially once I have the ridge vent opened up. All right, so there are some gaps. Let me zoom in here so you can see. Right up there against the building is a gap and there's a gap on the corners and a few little gaps along the way. So my thoughts were first to use some Miratech trim, but then I thought, you know what? I'm gonna use the cutoff pieces from this soffit to use as trim to basically put up against the, whoo, and that will go on top of the current soffit and fill that gap against the building. And that'll just keep the bugs out from making their home in there, which is something we don't want to have. Now that I have the fascia and soffit in, I can put the metal roof on top. I had to have that fascia on before I can put the drip edge in there. Otherwise, it would be difficult to uh, find the right space in there to put that fascia. So the next video should be putting on the metal roof here on this 20 by 30 shop. I'm Seth with the Seth Craft Channel, and I will see you in the next video.